When I was 18 years old, um, I had spent a lot of time volunteering on election campaigns for uh, local elected officials. It was sort of in my blood from birth. Uh, my father's a union welder. I grew up in a, as a fifth generation farming kid. Uh, we did corn, soybeans, and wheat uh, in rural Illinois where I'm from originally. And um, I got to meet a local elected official who was a woman, and we're going to talk today about women in elective office. But up until meeting Penny Severance, I thought that it was just men who did politics because in the, in the history books and everything I learned about in school, it was always men who were serving. And when we were on um, strike for a number of years, my dad's factory was on strike on some unfair labor practices and contract negotiations, I'd be on the picket lines with my dad. And Senator Severance would be out there coming to support the working class families and trying to encourage uh, settlement to the, to the contract fights. And I would look at her and I would say, oh my god, this is someone who constantly was coming and stepping forward to try to improve things in the local community, uh, standing up for the middle class families and always fighting to, to get the right thing done. And she was a woman. I thought, well, maybe I could be like her when I grew up. And I started volunteering on her campaigns. Um, I was the kid who wasn't begging my parents to drive me to concerts, but to drive me to the, the local Democratic Party headquarters so that I could stuff envelopes and, um, and put stamps on and whatnot. And so on my 18th birthday, I'm, I'm, I'm a December birthday, so I started school when I was almost six years old. So by the time I was graduating from high school, um, I was 18 and a half before I graduated from high school. So on my 18th birthday, I went to the principal of my little school. I graduated with 33 kids in my high school class. But I went to uh, uh, Principal Eccles and I asked permission if I could take a half day off school because, and he's like, why, because it's your birthday? And I said, no, because it's my 18th birthday and I want to go down to the Macon County Courthouse and register to vote. And um, I had spent all this time working for all these candidates and never had the chance to actually vote for them that you know, a lot of kids couldn't wait to turn 16 to drive, or couldn't wait to turn 21 to drink. I couldn't wait to turn 18 to be able to vote. And he very gladly wrote me that permission slip to be able to drive uh, about 30 miles away to the local county courthouse to be able to register to vote. And, um, and I, I'm not kidding you, I cried all the way home when I was driving home. Because I was so excited to vote and and the local league of women voters who i grew up with were, were a big part of that they instilled in me this importance of our civic duty to care about our communities to care about each other to fight for what is right and to use our power and strength in this beautiful franchise we are given with the right to vote as a way to express that and I couldn't be any prouder then as I am now in Penny Severn. Penny ended up passing of breast cancer at the age of 46, um, much, much too young. Um, but she very much instilled in me in the power of ordinary people to do extraordinary things. That each one of us can uh, step forward and make a real difference. And one of the first um, one of the first people I worked for in Congress, um, keeping with the theme of women in politics, my very first boss in the United States Congress is a woman named Marjorie Margolis Mazvinsky. She was a legislator from the western suburbs of Philadelphia, and she barely won her seat in 1992 in the Year of the Women. Her district at the time was five to one registered Republican. She was a Democrat. She won by only 1,200 votes. And almost everyone expected her to have a really hard time to get reelected in 1994. But particularly, the one bit of advice she was given when she went to Washington was, don't ever vote for a tax increase, because the wealthiest of the wealthy lived in her district and they didn't want to pay increased taxes. Fast forward into midway in her term, you'll recall that President Bill Clinton was struggling at the beginning of his presidency. Don't ask, don't tell didn't exactly go as he had hoped. His health reform plan was sputtering, and even though he had a supermajority of Democrats in the Congress, he was potentially not going to get his very first budget passed by the Congress. Um, there wasn't enough votes. There were more than the 218 Democrats needed to pass his vote just on a party line. But because he was trying to get us on a path to 
um, prosperity and, 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 and balanced budgets, he was, for the first time in a long time, in proposing an increase just on the upper echelons of income as a way to start reining in a path towards uh, fiscal prudence. And so a lot of people were uncomfortable with voting for a tax increase and they weren't willing to do it. And it kept hovering around 216, 217 in the, in the vote counts, and you need 218 to win. And Marjorie decided on the day of the vote that she was going to be the deciding vote. And when she walked down the aisle to cast that vote, because she had announced before the voting session started that she would indeed be the 218th vote, she was taunted by her Republican colleagues. They sang songs and, and uh, did like na 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 hey 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 goodbye. Marjorie, you're walking the plank, you're out of here. And she was willing to do that. When she was interviewed and asked why, she said, I'm a freshman member of the House of Representatives. Whether or not I come back is going to be an asterisk in the history books. But whether or not Bill Clinton's presidency succeeds, whether or not what he's trying to do for our economy succeeds, is so much more important, is so much bigger than me and my job. What courage. Women in office showing the courage of their convictions, standing up to do the right thing no matter what the cost. I am blessed to have had multiple women role models in government service who have been that shining light. And so in my own career, it, there have been amazing opportunities to step outside of what is normally expected of us to create opportunities for change and encouraging people to do something they would never think that they would do.